my name is Pascal. Today we are going to do a Rogue RM4 buy guide. So what I would recommend to you is that you go through the links in the description box below and open them and then go on a slip, split, split screen. And then I will walk you through all of the system and how to buy the Rogue RM4. I own it myself. So I will talk you through the other alternatives and what you can choose and why I like some of them and why not. And in the end, we will take a look at accessory. The big question about the Rogue RM4 is actually how big are you or do you really need an RM4 or could the RM3 actually be a better option for you to save some money? This is me standing in the Rogue RM4 and I'm personally 185 centimeters tall and 100 kg heavy. So in powerlifting terms, I would be a heavyweight. So think about yourself in the frame because you see like, you know, I have plenty of space here. And if you want to check out how I'm moving in the rack with the weights, then check out the playlists I have for training for the jersey. There you will see it from all different angles. And to make it a long story short, I have plenty of space in here. In fact, I would even go a size down and probably I would still be okay. So if you're even smaller than me, don't really consider the RM4 or even the RM6. I also felt like, oh my God, I need a very big rack so that I have a lot of space to move in around. But actually an RM3 is more than enough. With one exception though, if you wanted to deadlift in your rack, then I probably would lean a bit more towards the RM4 than the RM3, because once you have the plates on the rack at the bottom, you can sometimes touch off the plates and that makes your deadlift a bit wonky. And I, that is actually how I hurt myself quite bad when I was in my house beforehand where I couldn't lift deadlift in front of the rack and had to deadlift inside the rack. So if you're going to do that, then maybe the RM3 might be a bit cramped. But apart from that, if you're deadlifting outside the rack and only use it for squat and bench pressing, the RM4 is really big. Now, the only thing to consider with the RM3 is that the bench you will buy will most likely protrude at the front when you're bench pressing. So if you want your entire bench inside the rack, then also the RM4 is a better option. The same goes for any kind of attachments with the RM3. I think you're more bound to have to bolt it to the ground because if you then get the LT1 trolleys or anything kind of attachments, you just have a smaller footprint to balance it out than with the RM4. But still, if I had a redo, I would get the RM3 and then I would build a Rhino belt squat in the back of it. So the next thing to talk about is the color of the rack. So what you see here is the normal Rogue black finish that you can get for the base price for the RM4. The, the good thing about color is that Rogue has one of the widest palettes to choose from from all vendors and also they are one of the vendors that really have the most experience applying color to a rack. They're actually experimenting quite heavily with different ways of applying color to metal with e-coating, with electrolytes, with normal, you know, paint brushing, whatnot. So they are most likely to deliver a good finish on the colors and that is really a big plus if you want to treat yourself to something nice that also has nice coloring. Um, other vendors are playing catch up in that game. Yes, there are people who are catching up, but if you are wanting a consistent finish, then definitely Rogue is one of the best options out there. Two color options to talk about because they're adding to the base price are Serecati and Stainless Steel. The Stainless Steel one is very dear. That is basically getting different steel to the base model. Personally, I think it's not really necessary because you won't have a lot of grinding on the uprights at themselves anyway. I personally also don't really like the stainless steel finish. You know, it's just too shiny for my tastes. Of course, if you want to show that you got a lot of money, then 
get the stainless steel one because that basically adds another cost of, the cost of another rack to your base price. The other finish to, you can possibly get is Serecity. Now the Serecity finish is a bit less shiny and more matte than the actual Rogue Black finish. And this coating I would only recommend if you're only getting bumper plates or competitive, competitive competition plates. If you're getting steel plates with your rack, then they are more likely to eat into, into that finish and why pay extra money to then just you see more scratches on the rack. But that is just my personal take on colors. The good thing is you have a white palette to choose from and if you choose white, be aware that dust can actually be seen rather easily on it and if you choose black, be aware that if any of the color comes off from scratching or scraping, that is also quite visible on black. So there are also other channels that have red and green and blue, um, you know, racks. So look at them for the finish, whether you like it and then go for whatever you deem best. Next option to talk about is the height of the rack and Rogue offers 90, 100 and 108 inches. Now personally I would say get the tallest rack you can possibly fit. The extra cost is not really that much if you're already going for a Rogue rack anyway, which are usually more expensive than the rest of the world. Maybe bar the ghost lines um, that are recently have come up because they just use more metal. But anyway, if you're getting a good rogue rack, get this as tall as you can possibly fit. Now my rack here behind me is 90. So I couldn't get a higher rack myself because in the first house where we were in, the ceiling was rather low and I couldn't fit anything more in. However, if you're doubtful about the height and you can fit a high, taller rack then get the tallest that you can the money is well worth spending the only thing that i would ask you is to really really measure the ceiling height and also anything that might obstruct the taller rack and take that into account because the last thing you want is to saw apart a new rack or to deinstall an air conditioning or a garage gate just because you didn't measure the ceiling because most people just measure the floors rather than also looking up and being like, oh, okay, that stuff might get in the way of my rack. So for height option, get the tallest that you can possibly fit and do a good checkup of what you can actually fit into your garage slash home gym. So next option to talk about for an RM4 uh, is the finish of the nuts and bolts. So what I'm holding here are the nuts and bolts in bright zinc. You can also get them in black, then it's basically this version coated. For me personally, it doesn't matter. So get whatever fits your rack best. Now I went for the bright zinc ones because I have black and I want a bit of contrast. If you're getting the blue, maybe you want to go for black to then again have a bit of contrast, but it's totally up to you. Also, as a side note, the wrenches for these nuts and bolts, because they're rather massive, come actually free with the rack so that you can assemble it yourself. So don't worry about um, getting an order in and then not being able to assemble it because you don't have the big tools to actually put these nuts and bolts in. The next option to choose for your RM4 rack are the front and the back cross members. So let me walk you through the different um, options. So yes, I know that the curl pull-up bar that I have here is installed the wrong way around. Thanks for the comments from other people. I do have to do that and switch it. So with the next upgrade, I will do it. However, I wouldn't recommend this bar um, because if you get something in front, I personally would get either a socket pull-up bar or the beam with gusset because with a socket pull-up bar you are actually able to do kipping pull-ups, muscle ups and really more variations than this curled pull-up bar. This curled pull-up bar is actually more in the way for doing really proper pull-ups and chin-ups rather than helping. That is at least my personal opinion even if it was flipped the other way around. Now um, what you also can consider for the front is actually to get a beam with gusset and then install a crown pull-up bar on top of that. If you do a lot of strength training and power uh, and strongman training, that might be actually a good option. However, to be honest, do you really do that many pull-ups that you want to buy a crown pull-up bar that puts you back 200, 300 bucks? I don't know. Maybe a landmine is a better investment. 
but that is just me. Now for the back, I have the Rogue nameplate. Now I personally with this YouTube channel want to represent a little for you when you are putting your rack together, I personally would recommend the beam with gusset because the beam with gusset would basically get rid of the nameplate here and then you have the option in the back to also either install more attachments or just not have it in the way. Of course, if you want to show off that you have a rope rack, please get the nameplate or get the nameplate even customized. Be my guest, but if you're just into functionality and if I could personally have a redo, then I would get the beam with gusset. Unless, of course, I want to represent on a YouTube channel what I'm doing here. So then get the nameplate or if you're buying commercially and want your people to know that you invest in the best for them, then also get the nameplate. The next decision to make for your Rogue RM4 purchase is what kind of Jacobs you're gonna get. Now there are three, there are the standard ones, the one inch ones and the two inch ones. And I would personally recommend the more aggressive the barbell knurling that you will be getting for the barbell, the thicker you go on these Jacobs. Now why am I saying that? So what you have here is my standard Jacobs that came with the RM4 on delivery. So I went for the non-extra option and I have the Rogue Ohio Power Barbell that has pretty aggressive knurling. And actually this Jacob got rather beaten up. So if you see this shiny piece here, right, that is actually where the barbell is eating into the Jacob itself. Now I don't really see any kind of loss of material on the barbell itself. However, if you get an aggressive barber, then maybe get at least the one inch, maybe even the two inch Monster Jacobs, because I think it's worth the monies. I regret that I actually got the standard ones with it. Now, this is the result of two years of use and abuse. So, you know, you live and learn. And if I had a redo on that, I would get at least the one inch ones or a different barber that is less aggressive. So the next thing to choose for your Rogue RM4 are the safeties. Now Rogue provides you three different options here. One is the pin and pipe, the second is the strap safety and the third is the, are the flip down safeties. So personally, I only could buy the flip down safeties during the pandemic because in Europe the straps and the pin and pipes were all of stock by the time I was buying. However, I actually got a lucky escape on that one and I'll tell you why. So I'm very, very happy with the flip down safeties. And remember, if you are actually in a cramped space with the pin and pipe system, you have to feed it from the front. So you basically need the same depth as the rack free in front of the rack to actually make the pin and pipe system work and get it fed in and out. Not everybody has that kind of space in their home or garage gym or wants to sacrifice that much. And the flip down safety just swing in from the side. So if you have placed, uh, if you have space issues right in front of them, uh, the rack, then the flip down safeties are the better option. I also have a detailed review on my channel here. So check out the playlists and uh, have, a, have a, a more proper look at the flip down safeties. Now I have to thank Bender here on my channel. So Bender is somebody who actually commented that these are great value for money because when you throw them into an RM4 or RM6 configuration, they only cost you about $160 extra. If you later want to purchase them separately, they all of a sudden cost you 400 and something bucks. So if you ever wanted to intend to upgrade to these, just get them right with the RM4 rack rather than getting the pin and pipe first and then getting the um, flip down safeties later because technically you're saving a third on those flip down safeties when you buy them with the rack. Maybe Rogue got the pricing wrong there, maybe they want to sell as many as those because to be honest, if you are buying your RM4 rack and you get these for 160 extra, I would also highly recommend to throw in the utility seat because if you buy later, it is actually the same price for, uh, for the flip down safety without, without the utility seat. And I think the utility seat is excellent value for money. Just can't get it over here in Europe. But if I was in the US, I would have directly thrown that in with my original purchase. Now, um, these 
safeties work great, they do the job, I've dropped my weights on them, I think the highest that I've dropped on them was 170 kg, they're still solid, so with a pen and pipe it is more likely that they will deform. Of course you can head over to Eric Bogenhagen's channel and say, Pascal, what you're on about, you know, this guy is using and abusing his pin and pipes to the max, but it does bounce quite a bit, so I don't know, not everybody's Eric Bogenhagen, um, so I personally would recommend to get the flip down safeties for your own safety, but also because they're good value for money with the RM4. The straps themselves, I personally don't like straps for commercial use. I wouldn't get them at all because they're easily stolen out of your gym, whereas it is a bit hard to carry out a flip down safety or a pen and pipes. And um, it is also easier with the safety straps to actually install them at a decline or an incline. And then when you drop the weight, it all of a sudden comes towards you or rolls away from you unexpectedly. That is also a lot less likely to happen with the flip down safeties because you can't install them at an incline or a decline. Now, of course, that also limits you for some exercises, but as these are safety equipment, I think it can't get any better than that. So the extra money is worth it or get the pin and pipes. But again, you won't get the flip down safeties any cheaper than on your original rack purchase. With all of those choices made, you have your basic Rogue RM4 configured. So just to go over things, get the beam with gusset, get probably the one inch Jacobs, the flip down safeties and the utility seat um, to get the best value for money. And on color, stay away from the stainless steel and also stay away from the Serecity and get the tallest rack you can possibly fit. Because with that, you are getting the most amount of rack, in my personal opinion, for the least amount of box with Rogue Fitness. After discussions here on my channel with others who have bought RM6 racks and RM4 racks, but also based on my own experience. So the next few things I'm gonna talk about is accessory. Not everybody wants to get it, but if you're getting it, here are my thoughts on the different things. On your RM4 port purchase, I would definitely recommend to throw in four storage pins and do four of the long storage pins. So what you see here is actually a short storage pin. I personally regret that choice. I should have directly gotten four long storage pins and I also forgot to put them on my initial order. So be aware that the storage pins that are often advertised on the Rogue website don't don't come with the base rack. So add four of the long storage pins to your initial purchase if you are intending to store the plates on the rack themselves. Now, how much weight will you get on the rack with those four storage pins? I think easily up to 500 kg because personally I am using the black training plates from Rogue. I also have a review of those and of the storage pins here on my channel. And for the black storage pins, you can easily fit 125 kg in red plates on each of these storage pins. So the maximum would be about 500 kg on your rack. Most people will be more than covered with half of that capacity of storage uh, for kilograms and weight. Um, if you are getting steel plates, you will even get more weight on the rack because those are thinner than the training plates themselves. Super happy with these storage pins. What I actually regret is that I had to pay shipping twice because I forgot these on the first order and therefore I had to get them shipped at a later point. Never mind the waiting time, but that was my own stupidity. So put, them in, put four of those long ones in the basket and be merry. Next attachment you might be looking at is the LT1 lever arms. Now, if you are a football player, rugby player or a strongman, you probably will get quite a bit of value out of them because you can simulate Viking presses and car deadlifts with these. However, don't drink the Kool-Aid because personally I think that the combination with a landmine and a barbell, which costs about the same, gives you more functional movement and more directions 
and is actually easier to use. And funnily enough, on my Rogue RM6 spy guide that I recently published, I got the exact same comments of LT1 users who are saying after using it, it would have been better to get a landmine and a rogue barbell instead for roughly the same price because then you have two barbells to play around with and can have one that you can just leave on a deadlift platform or Olympic barbell platform or is a bit more specialized to a different type of training or train together with someone else. You see like there's just that much more versatility in it you are not investing a lot more money. Actually, you might be even saving compared to the LT1 and um, the LT1 themselves. They are great engineering, so the mechanics work well. The, everybody agrees on that and they are also fun to use, but a landmine and an extra barbell, I think, gives you just more to play around with for your home gym whilst saving you money. Now, if you're getting the LT ones, another comment on that also, try to get the short ones rather than the long ones. Now, why? The short ones can actually be installed within the rack, whereas the long ones can't be installed within the rack. And as space comes at a premium for any home or garage gym, you will then need the full length of the LT1 arms of the long ones in front of the rack for exercises that you might be not even doing that often. So if you wanted to use them with a bench and if you wanted to simulate different machines um, that you can find in a commercial gym with the LT1 arms, then the shorties are definitely the better option than the long ones. Another attachment a lot of people might be looking at is the Rogue Monster Slinger. Now overall the Slinger hasn't gotten a lot of great reviews and you can check out other channels where the equipment is actually in place and what they're going to say about it. But the general gist is meh for people who are using it. So if you want to get a lat pull with your home gym, you either bite the bullet and get one of the lat towers from Rogue, because basically what Rogue did is they were figuring out a pulley system for the Rhino and also for their lat pull machines and how to improve on that. And one of the iterations of engineering with that was the Slinger. Now, you now find the mechanics of the Slinger in the newer lat pull stations that they have. And that action is actually great. And also that lat pull station is getting great reviews, but the slinger isn't. So either do a bit of creative DIY with some other pulley systems that are cheaper. For example, the Spud Ink. Yes, it's not as great as a tower, but why get an expensive makeshift solution with a slinger and then some bands and then some storage pin and the seat that you attach to the you know, if you want a lap pull down and you have the space, then bite the bullet and get a proper tower that is fully inbuilt and can be attached to a wall or is freestanding and stay clear of the slinger itself. Now, what can you get instead? I would recommend the Rogue Monster Bands. The Rogue Monster Bands are excellent. Usually you do tricep extensions and anything that you do on a lap pull. Um, you know, to failure, it is more of a bodybuilding kind of exercise, not a max power exercise. And if you wanted to go to more pains of pulling and all of that, then get two of the Rogue Monster shackles with these bands and you have a lot of versatility that is easy to install and play around with without, you know, basically throwing money out of the window with the slinger because it was a good idea, but it had, did, didn't seem to work that well. No. That concludes the RM4 Rogue by guide. Everyone I've talked to so far are very, very happy with their Rogue equipment. So you're making a good choice here if that is what you're going for. I hope the comments help you to save some money and to get the configuration that you like. Then for that, I say, please like, subscribe and tell your friends about my channel. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments section below. Have a nice day and I hope to see you soon. Bye bye.